Hey everybody, it's Lee. How are you doing today? Welcome to our live oh, live showing of the Play Guitar Podcast episode 124. Wow, 124. That's going good. If you've never been here before, we do this every Monday at um, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And it's been going good. We've had a lot of fun, a lot of people hanging out in the chat. We have a few people in here right now I can see. And um, just want to talk about today, we're, we're talking about switching between acoustic and electric. And this topic came up in the Hangouts. We had a bunch of different really good topics <clears throat> that we were going to talk about today. And um, thought this one would be a good a good uh, topic for today. We've been doing a lot of motivation things and a lot of talking. I want to talk about playing. I want to talk about really getting uh, some problems squared away. And this one, this is usually um, a late beginner, early intermediate problem that comes up now and again. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of just fine to fine adjustments going in between the two guitars. I've got my acoustic with me today and my electric. We're going to be talking about some of the differences between each. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Um, I see Dean's here. I see Josh. And we've got a few others coming in right now. So great to see everybody. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start the show in just a second. Um getting all my stuff together here first and you'll hear the uh, the theme song go off and that'll that'll cue that we're headed in there Brennan's here too Coke's here so we got some, got some of the some of the weekend crowd coming in here on a, on a Monday I appreciate it it's great to see you guys okay so we're gonna go ahead and get started just a second here all right. And let's do a little three, two, one, three, two, one. Trying to make the switch between acoustic and electric can be extremely frustrating. Let's take what you've already learned and adapt it to our other instrument. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome friends to episode 124 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. Did you know when you started playing guitar that you were really learning two different instruments? And <laughs> both of them require a very different approach. Uh, you might say, wait. I didn't sign up for this. I thought I was just learning to play the guitar. Well, even if you've got a strong feeling one way or the other, there's a close to 100% chance that at some point you're going to have to either play on acoustic or an electric, even if that's not the one that you picked in the first place. Most likely you've already tried it and didn't take long to realize there's a whole new learning curve ahead of you for this other guitar. Today I'm going to go over the main points that cause frustration and learn the best way to approach them to make the switch between acoustic and electric as painless as possible. And guess what guys? I'm going to have to redo that because I didn't press record again. How about that? <laughs> I, was, I should have been uh, looking for Josh. So here's record. Here's recording. And we're going to do that intro over again. Oh man, I got a blooper reel that lasts and lasts and lasts. Okay, so let's see here. We're going to go to podcast main and start over again. Here we go. Trying to make the switch between acoustic and electric can be extremely frustrating. Let's take what you've already learned and adapt it to your other instrument. So stay tuned.
Hello and welcome friends to episode 124 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out, you've been playing for years. This is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. Did you know that you're really learning two different instruments that when you started playing guitar and both of them require a very different approach? You might say something like this. Hold on there. I didn't sign up for this. I thought I was just learning to play guitar. And even if you've got a strong feeling one way or the other for acoustic or electric, there's a very good chance that you have to perform on the other one at some point. Most likely you've already tried this and it didn't take you long to realize that there's a whole new learning curve ahead of you. So today I'm going to go over the main points that cause frustration and we're going to learn the best way to approach them to make the switch between the acoustic and the electric as painless as possible. Okay, so let's start. Number one, let's start with their physical differences. And actually let's start with how they're similar first before we get into the differences. Uh, the musical design for both of these guitars is the same. We've got six strings uh, with over generally over 19 frets up to 22 some go to 24 uh, but generally up there the tuners the strings the bridge they all function the same way uh, they're tuned the same standard tuning is the same on both guitars so you'd think it'd be easy to move from one to the other and that's where the problem starts <laughs> so let's talk about the differences the size of the guitar once you get familiar with your first instrument, whether you picked acoustic or electric to start with, when you switch to the other one, that it can be jarring. Uh, it, you're trying to accomplish what you've worked really hard on, say, an electric guitar, and then you pick up the acoustic, and it's a whole different matter. Um, acoustic guitars can be very wide. An acoustic, an acoustic player is used to a greater angle. I'm going to go ahead and get my acoustic first. So I think we're going to be talking about that first today. So my, here's, here's the, this is a standard, almost like a dreadnought shape. This is a Larivee guitar. It's not a huge guitar. It's not a jumbo guitar, but it's still very wide compared to electric. And um, when you're an acoustic player, you're used to a greater angle of picking and of fretting the reaching over the guitar and having your arm out farther um, when your arms are farther out the mount you have to bend your wrists and bend bend both your picking and your fretting um, arms um, to make sure that things come out clean it's it's a greater amount um, this is the opposite for electric guitars electric guitar tends to be thinner so your picking arms and your fretting arms are much closer in and you're much more bent at the elbows than at the wrists out here your wrists don't have to bend as much neither of these are really bad or good it's just what the players used to it's just for what you started with and you got used to it's the changes the drastic changes your playing form when you take on a new instrument quickly Let's talk about the length, length of guitar. Acoustic guitar tends to be a longer instrument. Uh, electrics tend to be a little bit shorter. Even if the scale length, which is the length from the nut to the bridge, even if it's the same, you're going to have a little bit longer of, the, of a guitar. Uh, the body of the guitar extends further than the electric. And the headstocks can be, not all the time, sometimes they're the same size, but I've seen some, some longer headstocks on acoustic guitars. Uh, what that means for us is that means where the acoustic sits, we may have a longer reach to get to play in our open position on the guitar. Play our open position chords and scales. Uh, you're you're bending your wrists a little bit more, and also the um, well the transition from electric and acoustic, the, the extended reach, and the changes to your playing form that come from it from how you hold your body while you're playing from it, that can be pretty tough. Let's talk about the height of the guitar, how high up it is if you're seated 
or even if you're standing up, high, the, the height of the guitar tends to be bigger on the acoustic than the electric as well. And when you're seated, it's a big difference between the guitars. You might find that you have to sit up straighter when you play an acoustic than when you play electric. Uh, some people do like to lean. Let's get this camera here a little bit down a little bit farther. Some people like when they play acoustic guitar, they like to lean on the guitar a little bit, kind of hunch over the guitar. Um, I'm going to show you in a little bit, we're going to get into that a little bit more, why you might not want to do that later on in the show. You might want to kind of back off from the guitar a little bit, let it sit where it, where it is there. Uh, the next physical difference between the two guitars is the strings. The acoustic guitar has thicker strings almost all the time. Um, and also it generally has a higher action. That's the distance between the top of the fret and the string looking at it from the side right here. It tends to have a higher action than an electric guitar. Um, why is that? Well, we have these heavier strings and they're having to do a lot more work. Uh, we, we tend to be pushing a lot more air with these strings. Um, so players tend to have a heavier touch with the acoustic guitar than the electric guitar. And because of that, the strings are going to vibrate, they're going to move at a, at a greater distance. The, the, the arc between one, way, one side to the other side is going to be wider. And because of that, it's important to add more relief to the neck of the guitar. What relief is, it's the curvature of the neck long ways. So you can use your truss rod to move your neck forward towards, towards the front of the guitar or backwards away from the guitar, a back forward bow or a back bow. And why we would want to do that is to, to leave more room for the strings to vibrate. Because we're picking them harder, they need a, a wider space to vibrate. If they didn't, if it was too flat on an acoustic guitar, you would hear a lot of buzz. The string would hit these frets, especially around here between the fifth, seventh, ninth fret. Uh, also, because we have heavier strings, and but they're tuned just as high as an electric strings, which uses lighter ones, we have a lot more tension in the strings, and this creates the need for more force from both pressing the, the notes down and picking the notes as well. Uh, another big change between the electric guitar and the acoustic guitar is how wide the neck is. That's a big difference. And a lot of people, well, we'll get into that. The electric guitar tends to have a much narrower neck than an acoustic. And that's comfortable, especially if you have smaller hands. That's more, a lot more comfortable for that. But it's not too difficult to get used to a neck this size, even though it's a little bit wider. It's not, and most people, when they, they try out an electric and an acoustic, they know it's different. You can feel it's different, but they may not put two and two together and realize that it, the, the neck is a little bit wider too. Uh, but the biggest shock comes from electric players who try to learn to play classical guitar, nylon string guitar. Nylon string guitars tend to have a very wide neck, very noticeable when you play that. And that's something, you know, if you started on that, that's something that you get used to. Um, you know, that, that having to stretch a little bit more in the hand, you get used to that. And when, then when you pick up an, an, um, an electric or even a, a, a Raylor steel string acoustic, it, it feels very, very small. Okay, so that's just the physical differences of the guitars. Let's talk about the nature of the two instruments how they're built, how they're created, what they're meant to do. Uh, let's talk about the first one is sustain. And that's how long the note lasts after you pluck it. It's very different between the two instruments. The electric is built for sustain. You have high tension strings. Let's, let me get the electric. High tension strings. Maybe I'll just hold them both. 
That'd be, that'd probably be better. Uh, built to a bolted to solid block of wood. That is a recipe for very long lasting sustain on a guitar. The acoustic, on the other hand, it's got a big hollow body. So the neck just is glued into the body right there. That's all you've got. Um, has a sharp drop off. And volume goes straight down after a note's plucked. And even though it's using metal strings, they give it a, a little bit of more help with the sustain. It still drops off because of the, the, um, the hollow body. How about the nylon string classical guitar? That has the least amount of sustain of the three. And <clears throat> if you are used to playing electric guitar and you hear the, just the beautiful sounds of the classical guitar and you, you just start to try it, the very first thing you notice is you pluck a note and it just goes away very, very quickly. So the nature of the three instruments, the, the way that they're designed has an effect on the tone, which can be different between the two guitars. Let's talk about the EQ, the tonal spectrum between all of these guitars, the highs, the mids, and the lows. They're dramatically different uh, between all three of those interests. Electric guitar has a lot of mid-range. If you've ever plugged a guitar straight into a mixing board, not into an amp, into a mixing board or, um, or one of those um, uh, uh, headphone amps, those kind of things, and it's not affected. It's just clean straight from the guitar. Uh, you hear how much mid-range that you get from straight from the pickups from the electric guitar. Many of the amplifiers that you get, they're designed to either enhance those mids to make them, the, especially the upper mids, cut through in a mix like a Marshall amp or scoop those mids out and make it sound more like an acoustic guitar. And so you, you're trying different amplifiers. You can get all a whole variety of different sounds for an electric guitar. But for an acoustic guitar, steel string, you're generally gonna get bright sounds with big boomy lows and not much mid-range. It's kind of scooped out. If you've ever seen a graphic EQ, it's like you take the center and make a big V with the shape. That's the sound that you're going to get from acoustic guitar. Um, but then the nylon string guitar, it's less bright. It's warmer. It's a warmer sound. So once you get used to playing the guitar that you started on and you make the initial switch, that's a big thing too. You, you, uh, you're not used to the way the sounds that are coming out. Um, experimenting with where you're picking. If you're using a, a pick, where on in line on the acoustic guitar, if you pick down here by the bridge, you're going to get more highs. It's going to be more mellow and warmer here. So here, the, the closer I get to the bridge, it's almost a nasal sound. See a lot of jazz players play up here right over the frets to get the warmest sound possible. Um, so uh, let's see here. We've talked about EQ and experimenting with picking placements. The last difference in the nature of both of these instruments instruments is they're geared towards either standing or sitting. And that can be a, one of the big uh, problems that people have getting used to. Uh, if, they, if, if you're used to uh, sitting playing an acoustic guitar and then get an electric guitar, your whole playing has to change the whole way you stand. So my opinion, the acoustic guitar is designed for sitting. Uh, you can argue that, but to, to me, that it just feels like a guitar, guitar that was made to be played while you're seated. Um, even though you can use it the other way, you know, it's, it, but the build and the design of the guitar makes it very comfortable to play when you're seated. Uh, because of the, the, the width of the guitar, how far out it comes from your body, uh, when you're standing, 
you even though when you're seated your arm has to to be out pretty far to play the acoustic guitar when you're standing as it's lower you have even more of a, an angle your artist your arm is kind of at a diagonal so you have to really crane your um your wrist to get to play in in position like that uh one problem it, the the uh in a jumbo guitar or a very big acoustic guitar it, we talked about leaning over the guitar resting on top of the guitar when i do that let me see if I can demonstrate for you today. I can hear a difference. If I was, I'm just going to play regular E chord. Now I'm si I'm seated seated straight up. I'm not leaning on the guitar; it's resting on my leg. It sounds pretty even across there. It sounds I hear all the brights. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lean over top of it now. It doesn't sound as sparkly to me and actually it seems to lose some of the sustain. It kind of just goes down quickly. Also some volume loss there too. And also when you're doing that too, sometimes when you're leaning on top, you could be pushing down on the neck, which could cause it to go out of tune a little bit too. Uh, I can hear the difference. Uh, it's 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 minimal, but it may be something that gives you a hard time when you're switching um, uh, beforehand. But if you've got like a jumbo guitar, a really really big guitar, that's sometimes that's unavoidable. You're going to have to lean over top of it, especially if if you're smaller, you're having to reach over like that um, and so just be conscious of how much weight that you're putting on the body of the guitar okay so we've talked about um, the physical differences we talked about the design and structure between the two guitars let's talk about best practices for the switch so the majority of these differences can be easily overcome over time and I'm going to give you a few tips to speed that up for you. Uh, so once you go from the acoustic over to the electric or go from the electric over to the acoustic, over time, this is not going to bother you at all. Uh, the first tip is keep them both out. The guitar case should only be used, in, in my opinion, to transport guitars from one place to another. Once they get there, once they arrive to wherever you're taking the guitar to, they should be out and be seen. So if, if you're always putting your guitar away, throwing it under the, in the closet, on the bed, so you're not seeing it, you're not going to play your second guitar. You're just going to stick to the one that you play all the time. It's not going to help with this transition. So not having enough time with each instrument, not being used to their differences, that's lack of time with the guitar. When you keep this and lock the way, lock away the other one, you're just making it harder for yourself in the long run. And when it, when you sit down to play, say you have somebody says, "Hey, let's go play some acoustic guitar," and you're used to playing electric all the time, you're going to be uncomfortable, and that's not going to be fun. It's going to it's, it's going to ruin uh, your time playing music. So the key is to keep both of the guitars in rotation, making sure. You play them periodically. Don't let it go by, especially if you're a, a, an advanced beginner, we'll say, or an, an early intermediate player. You should, I, I would pick different times of the day. And I would even put them in different rooms. So maybe put your acoustic by the couch and where you might be watching TV, you might want to pick it up and play a little bit. Or and then keep your electric in your practice space, you know. Uh, so keep them in different, keep them out in different parts of the house, and you'll be more likely to pick them up. Because the biggest, the biggest tip, honestly, is time. Spending time on these other instruments, then it doesn't seem so foreign. Uh, but how about experimenting too? Experiment, experimenting to make it easier to make the transition between the two guitars. The first thing I would recommend is make sure you get your acoustic guitar set up by someone who understands 
how to adjust an acoustic guitar. And that's not easy to find. Uh, electric guitar is much easier to set up. It's, it's, it's designed much easier to set up. So try and find somebody who who's, can really make an acoustic guitar easy to play. The bottom line is getting those strings closer to the fretboard. That's what's going to make your acoustic guitar easier to play. And it's not as easy as just turning a screw or an Allen uh, with an Allen wrench or anything like that. So the next is try to experiment with the string gauge. If you've got very heavy strings on your acoustic guitar, I use 11s, which is a lighter set of strings not the lightest you can go, go but a lighter set of strings so if you're going from electric to acoustic and acoustic is so hard to play so difficult try to get a lighter gauge of strings it's going to make it easier to press down uh, but at this by the same token i've had a lot of students who start off with acoustic and then when they went to electric they said that, that they always say it's like spaghetti noodles right they they're uh they're playing the guitar and they, the, the chords go out of tune because they're pressing down so hard because the strings are so light. So on the flip side of that is for your electric guitar, if you're an acoustic player, mainly acoustic player, let's get some heavier strings <clears throat> for your electric. It's going to make it much more consistent between the two guitars. Um, and we don't want to have that big gap between the two. So try and narrow the gap right there. Um, and don't, th this is a really good one. Don't leave this out don't, and don't be afraid to do, to do this. Ask other guitar players if you could play their guitar for a few minutes, just strum their guitar for a few minutes. If you're struggling making the switch between electric and acoustic, sometimes you might not have a good reference point of what a good guitar feels like. And once you know what a, a well set up, well played guitar feels like, you'll know the difference right away and you'll know, okay, something's got to be done. Um, it's a learning experience. Uh, knowing how a guitar feels to someone who you think is a good player, who you like to listen to. Once you get that reference point, you'll know what the problem is with your other guitar. And it may be something easy to fix. Uh, it may be something that just time getting used to your guitar maybe your guitar feels just like theirs did or maybe it's something that you need maybe getting a setup do some adjustments to the guitar or it might be that this guitar is just not right for you if you're playing other guitars and they're feeling good and this one never feels good no matter what you do to it it might be time to switch guitars completely and try something different okay let's go to my last tip my last tip is about bending and sliding notes. This is a big one for people who are trying to make the switch. Uh, coming from electric, we go this way, bending notes can be easy, especially if you have light strings. You sit down and just play those light strings. Uh, the first time an electric player tries to bend a string on acoustic, there's one word you hear all the time. Ouch, right? <laughs> it hurts. It can be tough to bend strings on acoustic. You don't have the hand strength yet. You haven't built up your calluses enough. So the trick is to replace those bends with slides, sliding into the higher note. You just have to think ahead before you bend. First, find the note that, that you would want the bent note to reach up to, the higher note. Um, start from the note that you would normally bend and slide into that higher note slide right up the string it's not exactly the same it's not the same effect but it's a very effective way of adding interest to your guitar licks and you're not tearing your fingertips off <laughs> when you're when you're doing that so okay so there it is there's my uh my tips for people who are making a transition between electric and acoustic guitar really understanding the difference between the two guitars is the, is is the biggest thing uh, but another one of the biggest problems is transitioning from electric acoustic is playing chords without buzzes and playing chords without dead notes. Uh, so I'm going to help you make this transition a lot easier. I have a free gift for you. It's my guide to clear sounding chords 
and this guide has helped so many guitar players get past this. Uh, they get right back to having fun and learning again instead of getting stuck trying to make these chords sound very good. It's over at playguitaracademy.com forward slash chord guide. I uh, really hope you take a minute to go and download that. It's, it's helped a lot of people and it could help you too. Okay, so a little bit shorter episode today, but we hit all the main points there. It was so much fun to hang out with you today. I'm going to call it That's a Wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. Also, I really appreciate it if you could leave a review for the show. If you're just starting or you're new to the guitar, head over to just uh, to start here guitar. Uh, check out my premium 11 week beginners course. It gives you the foundations you need to move forward correctly on the guitar. And follow me on all of my social media pages. Links to them are playguitaracademy.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode. We did it. I didn't stop for the chat this time. I wanted to to uh, go straight into it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to stop recording on these now. And we're going to do some hanging out here at the end. Uh, so who do we got here? We have. OK, I'm going to go back a little ways. Doing a hang out at the end, I think, is much much better. I'm a, I'm a, I get, through, <laughs> get through that. Uh, Coke says, I think I play my acoustic and electric every single day. Couldn't do without either one. That's great. That's not the norm. That's not how norm, people normally do it. Because they're so centered on different things for me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, yeah, I, I, I missed, I, at least, at least I figured it out, you know, early on, uh, got my rehearsal on the intro right there. So David's here. Hey, David, good to see you. And D Dean says, and it was perfect. I know. Hey, man, what are you going to do? Um, David says, the chatter I heard online when I started to learn guitar was that electric was easier to play. It takes less strength, less hand strength to play. Um, so in that sense, it's easier, um, but if you if but if you know if you're set on acoustic guitar, it's not worth it, you know. And it doesn't take very long to build up that that hand strength. Kevin was here. Kevin came in and he said, "Hey guys, late doing the work meetings. No blue shirt today. Yeah, I I, I, I had a few minutes, so I went and I found the old white V neck here, one of my course shirts there. Kenny's here. Hey Kenny, good to see you." And Coke said the most shocking thing for me playing a classical is how easily they make sound compared to steel, whether fretting or plucking. Such a light touch. Yeah, and they're fun too. It's a lot of fun. I have a Yamaha. I have a Yamaha that's um, that's really got a nice pickup on it. It's really uh, a, a not an expensive guitar either. That. Um, you can plug into a PA and it sounds fantastic and it's so easy to play. Master Nun's here. Good to see you. Uh, let's see here. Evan made it. Let's see. That was four to Good. All right, man. Evan's here. Evan says, got to string up a guitar for my daughter later. That's a great feeling. Yeah, I, I read that. That's great that she's going to she's gonna do that. That's, that's a lot of fun. Um, and <laughs> Josh... His boys were in it for a minute, but now they're getting into rap. That yeah, it doesn't last long, man. They'll come around. Um, okay, so let's see. So everybody's talking about their kids and going back and forth from rap music. Um, Evans says loves Radiohead. They're one of your favorites too. So took her to see them a couple years. That's cool, man. I've never seen Radiohead. They're a good band, too. Uh, I played a lot of Radiohead songs in a cover band I was in one. once. So we're going through that. Dino's here. Great to see you, Dino. Sorry I'm looking down here. I just don't have the chat um, set up on my computer just yet. Here, maybe I'll do that right now. That'd be easier. I'm going to pop the chat out of here so I can see it. 
There we go. Okay. Josh says, my Guild Acoustic feels so much better than my Washburn. Why do you think that is? What about it? Though, when, when you notice something like that, when you notice that when you play a guitar, it feels great uh, and, and you can't put into words why it feels great, it's really worth spending a little bit of time and trying to figure that out. Uh, so that's awesome that you notice that, that they're different. And tr let's, let's find out why. What about them feels different? Because once you start to know that, you're going to start to narrow down this to the guitar that you really like to play and the things about the guitar that you like. Evan says, I haven't picked up my acoustic in a couple of years. Probably need some work to get the action down. Memory serves. New project. There you go. <laughs> so Brandon says, have you guys had your acoustic guitar set up? Uh, I have a Larave I bought as my first guitar. And it's a nice guitar, but it always feels like it could use a setup and attention to action. I would do it. And actually, over the years, too. So let's see. This guitar, when I got it, came set up nicely. And then over time, it's an older guitar. The bridge, it hasn't pulled up a lot, but, it, but the bridge, the tension kind of pulled it up a little bit. So I've had to go in and make adjustments it'll do that over time and then at some point you'll need to have somebody come in and either do a neck reset to match the angle of how much it pulled up or just to redo the whole bridge too and the both of those are involved um, Evan says you should start pointing people to your YouTube channel and the outro as well okay I'll do that uh, I have to add that to my my template there because I just finished <laughs> getting everything together um, for the show and just ran in here so I'll have to remember to do that later on tonight yeah I, I may do that I may um, say something the nice thing about the uh, acoustic I mean the uh, audio podcast is I can um, go in and add some stuff later on too doesn't it sounds it, it's easy to do that without really sounding like it was recorded at a different time. So Josh says, go Troubadour with it. Evan, walk around the house telling stories about the things going on in the house. Josh, kid's crazy. Yeah, it sure does. Um, so Kenny's here. Good to see you, Kenny. And Evan says, like Monty Python's the minstrel following Sir Robin. That's awesome. I'm not going to go into, go into that. That's, that's funny. Um, Dina says, playing both electric and acoustic is beneficial, in my opinion. Um, and Josh says, yeah, it is. It is. And I started off at started off with an acoustic guitar, but my but um, electric was the one that I really was in. I really wanted an electric guitar. And when I got it, um, that's all I played for a long time. And then when I started playing in bands and playing out, kept saying, hey, can you play some acoustic? Can you play some acoustic? Can you play some acoustic? And um, so I was like, hmm, something here. I should play a little more acoustic. People seem to like it. And uh, it's been beneficial. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate that. Josh said the episode was awesome. Chris is here. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. And Dina brought out the classical. Yeah, you, you were playing the, the uh, nylon string on, on your video this week, too. And so Evan says, I'm, re I'm ready to tackle my own acoustic setup. Yeah, that's a, um, that's involved stuff, man. If you could do it, it's, it, it'd be awesome. I'll send you some stuff. <laughs> Coke says, would love to get my acoustics uh, set up. One's 75 years old, though, and I realize it doesn't have an adjustable truss rod, so I imagine both none and bridge would need to be replaced yeah, and, or, or the neck reset, too. Yeah, that Martin I have, it doesn't have a truss rod either. Uh, we have a we have a guild that was my my um, father-in-law's before he passed away. It's a really, really nice guitar. And I actually recorded with it on one of E.G. Kite's albums. We did a 
um, I did an open tune kind of blues slide thing and was just the vocals and me playing it. it turned out really nice on that guitar. It needs some work there. It's starting to bust at the seams a little bit. Um, Dina says, actually, nylon string was my first guitar. Easier on the fingers. Yeah, and for for um, for younger kids, I usually say go for the nylon string if you can get it. There's a lot of uh, like smaller size nylon strings that are really good for younger kids at first um, because it's easier on the fingers. And Josh says, fretboard feels dry on the Washburn. Um and think different kinds of woods used on the neck, but the Washburn has higher action and also setup might help. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the kind of thing with acoustics. You're, you're dealing with filing, a lot of filing. You know, um, the one thing you can do with an acoustic is the truss rod. And once you've done that and get that as close as you can, you realize, hey, some more's got to be done. And you're dealing with <laughs> removing parts of the guitar doing a lot of filing and stuff so yeah it's um it's a little bit more involved evan says condition that fretboard that's right that's right okay everybody um got the podcast done got to hang out i'm glad i see some folks who's like evan said he wasn't sure he's was going to make it so i'm glad you made it evan it's good to see you guys and um so I've, let's see what's coming up for the week. I'm going to tomorrow is is uh, editing the podcast, editing the three videos, and continuing work on the academy. That's for me. Now I may do some of that tonight after dinner too. We're going to get out of the apartment today. Where I think we're all going a little stir crazy. So we're going to go for a drive today. Uh, not, I don't think we're ready to eat out yet, but we are going to get out, take a drive. Uh, tonight, I probably will work on the Academy a little bit more. I'm kind of doing that every spare minute I get. Thursday is taxes day. I'm gonna, I've am gonna, i been putting it off, so I'm going to get those done. And then once those are done, it's Academy all the rest of the week. So there's my week right there. No um, traveling or anything like that. <laughs> There's no, we're not going in any place too. Oh yeah, it's my birthday on Wednesday too. So we got, oh, we have the, um, on my birthday, we have our uh, meeting for the breaking ground on the house with the builder on a Zoom meeting. So looking forward to that. So yeah, there's some, there's some cool stuff going on the week. Anybody else have anything cool happening this week? Um, going back through the chat, just making sure I didn't miss anything. I got to tell you, I, I really enjoyed these. When, when we first started doing the experiment, I was mostly focused on equipment not working and just hoping I got through it. And, you know, for this week, was really nice. The, um, the Friday and the Sunday, one, I was uh, calm <laughs> and knew you guys would be here. So I had, a, it was a fun time. And then Saturday, man, that was fun too. Um, I liked, what did you guys think? Do you guys think that the uh, Guitar Talk episodes, you like it better with more people in there or just, we just had three. Uh, I think there's, it's fun to do both. Um, but with just having three people, it was, it was a little bit more, um, manageable i think i think what i'll do is um do both do sometimes do one we have a whole bunch of people in there it, it depends on the topic i guess <laughs> dave, dave says now you can join our no. hey man i'm still i'm still 49 for a couple of days you know <laughs> i ain't doing none of that stuff man uh Thanks for the birthday wishes. I appreciate it. I don't ever put um, my birthday down on like Facebook or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just not into all that. But I'm, I, uh, you guys, I spend more time with you guys than I do anybody else. So uh, 
I shared it. <laughs> so thank you, David. Thank you, Brennan. Thank you, uh, Coke. He says your wife's birth birthday's Thursday. We'll tell her I said happy birthday too. Um, and thanks, Josh. And thanks, Dino. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, you guys. Um, yeah, um, yeah, we're just gonna have fun doing it. I ch my wife, wife asked me what I want for my birthday, and I said I just I just want to move to Florida, and get out of here. So, um, so that little meeting that we're getting. What was really nice is the neighborhood that we're moving into. Uh, somebody put uh, some drone footage uh, up of the construction from like a week ago or two weeks ago. So because we're so far away and there's all this quarantine and stuff. We can't go down there and keep up with everything. So um, so we got to check it out too, which was nice, which is very nice. So that's what I'm excited about. Uh, so let's see here. Josh says, I think it would depend on the topics. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And <laughs> yeah, well, we, we think alike, man. We think alike. And Kenny says, you're fun to hang out with. You're fun to hang out with too, man. I uh, I run into you. I remember. Do you remember when I ran into you at the fair that one time, about 15 years ago? So we've been having lessons all the time, and I just, you know, you're it's you're uh, and, and came over to the house too. Came over to the house too, back there, um, in Macon, a long time ago, man. So <laughs> Evan says had to take a call. I missed telling you happy early birthday. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're going to give me a tie. Thanks. I don't know if I'll wear it, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Thanks, man. <laughs> appreciate it. All right. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to call a little early today. I did a little bit shorter podcast today. They were getting a little... Um, when I would edit the videos... I had to chop a lot of stuff out just to keep because of trying to keep those videos around uh, around 10 minutes. So I thought I'd keep it a little bit shorter today and do my hanging out afterwards. King says, yep, those were the days. That's right, man. A Star Wars T-shirt. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I got I got a. Um, I got a few. I got a few ones I haven't worn on it, worn on here yet. I got some good ones. Um, yep, need a new hat, man. This thing's getting old. I'll have to get me one of those. Order me one. Oh, oh. business purchase. Uh, getting a new um, DSLR camera for video for live streaming, and for the videos too. So everything I've been doing now is with these Logitech C920 S's, um, Logitech C920 webcams, and they, they do a good job. And I've been using them for so long, I know how to, uh, how to make them look a little bit better than they normally do. And the camera I've had is a uh, Canon, old Canon, that won't do, um, won't do, you know, live video or, anyway, so I'm getting a Panasonic, um, it's a G7. It's not their high end one, but it'll do 4K video and it'll do streaming. So I can take the HDMI out and it has a clean out so it doesn't have all the, the junk that, that you see um, uh, through the viewfinder and around the screen. And so that's that's my um, that's my business uh, purchase here. So hopefully if I can get all the equipment working, uh, we'll have um, much higher quality streaming and much higher quality videos too. And so that'll be coming in over the next couple of weeks. Now, shipping now, you know, oh yeah, it'll get here between next week and a month or something. <laughs> but, but yeah, so um, I'm doubling down on this live streaming. I think it's cool. Uh, we have a good group. We're just going to grow this group over time. Uh, and I'm going to start um, mentioning it a lot more. We'll get some more folks in here and we're going to build it up. 
I miss some things. Cook says, all right, I can't keep my hands off the guitar, so I'm turning on the amp. Have a wonderful Monday evening, everybody. It's great to see you, Cook. Thanks for hanging out. And Kevin says, had to take a call. Did I see it's Lee's birthday? It's on, it's on Wednesday. I got one on Wednesday. Um, so Evan says, you too, Cook. See you next time. Josh says, thanks, Lee. Good stuff. Enjoy your day. Not really getting you a tie, but clip on's my style if I got to wear one. <laughs> That's good. That's good. All right. Okay, guys. I'll see you on Friday. Have a great rest of your week. And if you guys need any help with anything, um, I'll be checking emails. I'm um, going to try and do better with emails. I'm going to start doing those after dinner every night so, so I don't get behind on those because uh, before you know it, I get behind. I've got a bunch of emails. Uh, I got a t Kenny sent uh, had some good posts I got to to get in touch with, and um, I, Dean. I've got several emails I need to to get. Dean sent me one today, and I'll be getting back in touch with you hopefully by the end of this of the evening. So, okay, you guys, you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you on Friday. Bye bye.